pretty red right now, but I don't know. I'm driving back from an Airbnb situation handled. Um, so I thought I'd make a quick video for people who um, wanted to be managers of Airbnbs. You know, like I said in one of my other videos, there's three ways that you can become an Airbnb uh, host. You can be a manager of someone else's property. Um, you could rent someone's property and then sublease it or uh, put it up on short-term rental, Airbnb, uh, you pay the rent, whatever you make on Airbnb, use yours to keep minus all expenses. And then you may have a property that you don't use uh, all that often and so you're going to rent it for the time that you don't use it so that it'll help offset the costs of owning that property. Uh, those are the three main ways uh, for people to get involved with Airbnb. You know, I got started because uh, we traveled throughout Europe on a trip and I, uh, we stayed exclusively in Airbnbs. We had three families and I'm a family, we have a family of five. So anytime we go to a hotel, it's always cramped. My kids are too big now to just, you know, all fit in one bed. So, you know, I got started with Airbnbs because as a family of five, we needed a better, we needed a different space. We needed a space where we could all fit, we weren't cramped. And so I started looking at short-term rentals on Airbnb especially. And uh, we found some places that were close to uh, hotel costs. Maybe a little bit more expensive, but you know, the, than the hotels that our friends might have been staying in when we went to a soccer tournament or something like that. But they had a kitchen, full kitchen. They had a living room. They had a, a backyard, maybe with a pool. So for me, um, for us as a family, it just made more sense in in, in doing that. And so I uh, got started like a lot of people and. I, I took a course. I found a course on how to do Airbnbs from a successful guy, and uh, very similar to the one that I'm building. Paid about $500 and uh, learned the basics of Airbnb. Realized that for me and my family, that we needed to start out as uh, not, I didn't want to just be a manager. I didn't know anybody that had Airbnbs locally. And so I wanted to do Airbnb arbitrage. I wanted to rent and then sublease as uh, Airbnb. And so I started talking to people. I didn't have enough money to put down on a home or on a, a property. And so I, I didn't, you know, initially I was looking at vacation areas. I was looking like most people when they think of uh, short-term rentals, they think of vacation rentals. They think of, you know, oh, well, we're going to put something by the beach or in the mountains where people vacation and I'm going to, you know, buy a property there. I didn't have the money to put down on a property uh, in a vacation area. And so I was just open to any place um, that I could find that I could rent that the landlord um, or owner, property owner would allow me to sublease. And uh, I found it pretty hard, you know, initially to get landlords to, you know, rent to me and allow me to rent outside, you know, to Airbnb hosts, I mean, to Airbnb guests. And so for me, it was, it was a little bit of a struggle. Luckily, um, you know, as things have it, a friend of mine had posted that they had a apartment coming up for rent and they were looking for somebody to 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 rent it and so i reached out to them he was a former soccer player of mine and uh it was not in a vacation spot but uh as i ran the numbers using a couple of tools um that in our in our course my course i, I go over and how to use those but using a couple of those course uh, those tools I found that I, th I thought that that property could be profitable. And I set a, I, I really set a, a, a gauge or a, a goal on how much I would want each property to be, uh, you know, to make each month. And based on that number, based on, based on those numbers on occupancy, on, on uh, amount I could rent it for, I just felt like that property was gonna be profitable. And so I asked him, if we could rent it, he, uh, you know, asked him if he wanted to partner with me actually initially. 
And because I, you know, again, I didn't have this extra money lying around to, you know, throw at an Airbnb. And when you're doing rental arbitrage, a lot of times you're going to be furnishing the apartments or houses or whatever, you know, property that you're going to be renting out. And so I realized very quickly that furniture, um, appliances, all that is not cheap. And uh, we started making a list of things that we're putting in the, in the, in the first apartment. And my, that first apartment, man, it was not done, you know, like high class, high dollar. It was definitely, you know, not minimally, but we decided that, or I decided when we were doing that, when I was doing this initial apartment that I was not gonna put anything used. Uh, I did do a used washer and dryer. Um, but after this apartment, I realized that, you know, putting something in that was used, yeah, I saved a little bit of money, but I didn't know where it was coming from. So I'm putting this in an apartment and I'm gonna have guests there. Uh, it's not that I'm living there. These are guests. And if they, if anything crawls out from underneath that couch, you know, used couch or used appliance, um, you know, those guests are going to see that. So we decided to, you know, I decided when I was doing this first one, I, I did it on my own. Um, you know, when I told people that I was going to do an Airbnb at this, uh, small town, smaller town up against the mountains, uh, that really had no, a lot of, you know, didn't have a lot of anything there. Um, people thought I was crazy, but the numbers showed me that I wasn't, the numbers showed that this could be profitable. And so I just went with it and I wanted to try it. So I, uh, took out a credit card and bought my appliances and furniture, had them delivered, put it in there, took some pictures on my cell phone and ran it, put it up on Airbnb. And for the first month, I think our uh, net profit was $370, about that $370. Um, but we, we didn't lose money on the monthly expenses now we had uh, dude you, I, I don't know if I can turn this around I don't think I can but you guys got to see the, the clouds right now I mean it, this, is, this is it's insane I don't know if you guys can see this hold on one second I don't know I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see that but dude I'm driving right now and it's freaking awesome outside um Anyway, by first month, we, you know, that $300 went towards, it cost me about seven grand. My guess is about, you know, looking back, is about seven grand to furnish the apartment, um, first and last month's rent, getting all the utilities set up. Um, I don't put cable in our units, everything's streamed. So we just have high, high speed internet, uh, smart TVs, that kind of stuff. I don't put cable TV in there. Um, or a satellite TV, but that was, so it cost me about six grand, um, for that first apartment. And my first month we made $300. So, you know, obviously I didn't pay for the whole first month, uh, or pay for the whole thing in the first month. Second month, we made a little bit of money as well. Third month, we made a little bit of money as well. And then in that third month, uh, I found somebody who, or somebody found me who was working in the area, uh, Monday through Friday and needed something for a little bit longer term for a couple months. And what I found was that that um, model, somebody was working in the area, um, more of a corporate renter instead of a uh, vacationer in this area because there was few choices in hotels and other short-term stay areas or, or properties that people were looking for a place to stay. And so this was a two bedroom, one bath, a little bit less than 900 square feet. And him and his roommate or him and his coworker uh, stayed with me and they stayed Monday through Friday most of the time. And I was then able to open up on Friday through Sunday and, uh, you know, rent to the people that are going to the national park that would come into town from LA or San Francisco and driving a couple hours this way. And they were going to go to the park. So, um, it's about an hour away from the national park. 
um, about probably about an hour and oh, maybe two hours and 20 minutes from the, the, la- the ocean. They have a, there's a lake nearby, probably uh, 25 minutes away. So there are some things around it. Uh, there's not a lot of hotels. There's two hotels, two main hotels there. One is not in such a great area. Um, but I just feel like I felt like if I could just keep the rate near the hotel rate and uh, the property had just gotten an upgrade in the kitchen. And so I just thought we could rent it. And after that point, we started renting it. And then my net on the, that that uh, apartment went from $300 to about $1,500. So $1,500 a month. So after about uh, seven months, I had paid off that credit card um, and expense to set up that that apartment and it started cash flowing from there. And, you know, on average, we try, I try to make sure that we are at, at about a thousand dollars net a month. And sometimes it's less. I mean, with summer, it gets a little bit less, but I try to keep it around a thousand. And, and um, so about a year later, almost uh, probably about seven months later, uh, the second unit of that duplex that I was in popped up as uh, available. So I told my friend who owns the duplex, hey, can I take this other unit? And he was down for it. So he said, sure, if you want to. Um, you know, why would this guy want to do that? Why wouldn't he do it on himself? Well, one, uh, you know, a lot of people don't want to manage people. You know, even renters, when you have a renter and you have, you have multiple properties, lots of properties, it's like, you know, dealing with a renter, even on the monthly basis, when you're collecting rent monthly, can be a pain. Or if you're dealing with stuff that happens when people are living there in a year lease can be a pain. So a lot of renters, a lot of people or, or, or um, landlords who have renters and, and have been in that game for a long time, they just see Airbnb as a lot of renters that are checking in and checking out. So you got to deal with that on a day-to-day basis. So uh, they don't want to deal with that. They'd rather deal with, with someone like me who keeps their property super clean, um, make sure that's professionally clean every single time someone goes in and out, deals with all of the things, um, whether it's maintenance, uh, making sure that the apartment is taken care of. If there's any air conditioning, plumbing, electrical issues, I deal with that. Um, you know, I'm like the front line of those things. Um, and in, unless there's something big, you know, they don't have to deal with it. You know, they just don't. So, um, we got a second unit and that second unit booked like right away. We were, uh, you know, we had enough. Um, we were super, I was, I was a super host. My parents actually came in uh, and I figured out that if I could, you know, get a couple of properties, my main goal was to retire my dad, have him be able to be retired and not draw down from the money he saved, but make about the same money that he was making uh, when he was working construction, when he was on payroll. So my goal was, can I can I create enough money where then I can pay for him to be home and not have to worry about, you know, have him not worry about, you know, will I have enough money? He's about seven years old and, uh, you know, he's, it's, he's been working, he's owned a construction company for 40 years and I just, you know, would like him in the last kind of stages of life to be able to enjoy it and just not worry about money and, uh, and do that. So, uh, I talked to him when we got our second apartment and just asked him to be a part of it, him and my mom. And, and so that's what fortune five rentals came, came, came to happen. And, uh, so we added another unit, a friend of, a friend of the first landlord and heard that, you know, Hey, I'm looking for more properties. I, uh, said I could do it. And this guy had renters again, he had a fourplex and was tired of dealing with crazy renters and wanted somebody that he could trust and wanted somebody who was going to take care of the place. I mean, technically when we have renters leave out, when we have our guests leave, you know, the, the landlord could technically, we could move out our furniture. They would just have to, you know, basically wipe it down and it would be ready to sell or ready to rent again. So, I mean, it's, it, people aren't necessarily living in these apartments or houses or whatever, because they're, they're there for a short time and we're cleaning them professionally every time they leave. So, uh, we got a third unit, uh, in the second year and a fourth unit in the second year. And, uh, all of those were cash flowing above a thousand dollars a month. So, um, my parents ended up buying a condo in the same city 
because uh, two bedroom, two baths were doing really, really well. Then two bedroom, two bath condo came up. Um, and so they ended up buying that. We turned that into a short term rental. Uh, we had to, they renovated the place, made it look awesome. And uh, so we started doing that. And, and then after year two, we had, um, I want to say we had five, five rentals, four in one city and another one in another small city, a rural county, a rural city with less than 25,000 people, two hotels uh, in it nearer to my house. But we uh, were cash flowing, you know, anywhere between uh, three and five thousand dollars a month, uh, just with that. So, you know, I didn't get started in this thing to be, you know, a millionaire or six-figure earner or any of that kind of stuff. I really just wanted to replace an income for my dad, and I knew that that was going to be, uh, you know, about eight hundred dollars a week, nine hundred dollars a week if I could uh, to help supplement what they were already doing. That's what my goal was. And for me, when I'm looking at properties, I just wanted to make those properties above a thousand dollars a month. If I could get four of those, you know, we're right there, you know, the numbers right there. So it's crazy how things happen though. You know, I started talking about this with other people and I started anytime a property I heard was coming up and for rent, I just threw out there that I'm looking for a place to rent. And I told them the program, um, and it just, it just kind of spiraled and eventually at, at the end of week, at the end of year two, going into year three, I believe we had six properties. So we had a couple properties uh, in a small, really kind of a farm town and then uh, two up against the foothill, I mean four up against the foothills. So, but all, none of them are vacation areas, like none, these are not vacation rentals, these are corporate rentals really um, and I learned to get on learned some tricks to be able to get onto those boards those message boards or to those uh, groups you know to let people know uh, with traveling nurses or you know journeymen and stuff like that so um, year three went nuts we went from six properties to uh, on October 1st we'll have 14 properties that will be available for short term rent and, um, you know, our, I mean, our monthly gross, you know, I mean, our expenses have gone up, you know, exponentially as well, but, uh, our monthly gross went from, uh, you know, $3,000 a month, two years ago, $3,000 a month to $50,000, um, uh, in September. So, you know, it's very, very easy to see how this can become a big business or you can make money doing it but you know having this idea that you have to do this in a vacation market is just not it's just not not true you know you can very easily um, find a place close to you rural America people are working or traveling to see family um, and they want to stay where they can be comfortable so I, 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 I'm living proof and you don't have to be great at it to start. I think if you, again, I, I took a little moment. I, um, I definitely made sure that I, I, I invested in a little bit of education. And so maybe that's what you're doing here. And if you're interested in of course that could help you get started in rental arbitrage, just like this for short term rentals and more so for the corporate side of things maybe less for the vacation side. Not that you couldn't do it for vacation. I mean, you can, I think the risk just gets higher. And, uh, you know, because you have less people there consistently, but, uh, you know, obviously it's it's possible if the numbers work. So understanding where the numbers are and understand that, that you, uh, you know, there's, there's uh, good properties and there's properties that probably are not gonna cash flow as well. I think those are important, I, you know, things to do and to know um, and some of that takes a little bit of doing some of it just takes understanding what the numbers are and then creating some goals for yourself and you know allowing yourself to get out there and try one I mean I do put some some safeguards in place you know when we do uh, short-term rentals I have a 60 day out so my 60 day out is I look for a two year 
rental agreement with a 60 day out, meaning I can give you 60 days notice that maybe this rental is not doing what we anticipated based on the numbers. You know, I use pretty conservative numbers, but sometimes they just aren't there, right? And so if I can, if I can't do it, I will, and I haven't had to do this yet, but I will uh, tell the property owner, listen, in 60 days, I gotta get out because we can't do it. Uh, it's not gonna work. Um, but then that minimizes my risk as well for the, you know, all the things, whether it's PG, whether it's, uh, you know, utilities, but mostly rent, because rent's probably our highest um, risk factor and our, our busy, biggest expense um, when we're doing rental arbitrage. So if you're not renting anything, then, you know, you're losing money because you need it to rent. And in most cases, you know, you're going to need to rent eight days, uh, depending on what kind of formula you use. But for us, if we are not renting eight days, then we're probably losing money. So, uh, man, this was a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. I don't know if you guys made it to this point in 22 minutes in. Uh, you know, I appreciate you guys listening. And, you know, if this is even, if you got one or two things of value, love for you guys to subscribe. I got to get to like a thousand subscribers before I can, I got like six. So, you know, I got to get to a thousand before I can go live. I'd love to be able to walk you guys through some of the properties that we have. You guys can see um, some of the things that we've done, starting with our very first property, also going through kind of the spreadsheet that we've created uh, to track, track our profit, our expenses, um, also some things you might need if you are a new Airbnb uh, host, uh, some things you might need for taxes, because those are things that I didn't know. And in my course, uh, you know, I kind of talk, I talk about those things because in the course that I bought, they didn't talk about those at all. They just talked about, Hey, set it up, put it on the, you know, take some pictures, put it up there, you know, get a license, get an LLC, do all of the stuff to, to get a business. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, there's some other tricks in there that you're going to need to make sure you do if you're going to be successful. So have a great day.